Oké, ik deel nu mijn scherm. I am sharing my screen now. Yep, you can go ahead since you're going to tell us yes. what you were doing regarding Corbion and the project. Sure. Yes. I think we should start with a disclaimer. We need it in case we share some confidential information. Yes, this is something we're extremely careful about. Yap is going to tell you more about Corbion, in particular about the project. I think the way Corbion approaches the project, as well as the points of attention, etc., are quite interesting. I will elaborate a bit on the user adoption and the trajectory regarding change management and the instructions to the employees. After that, Yap will continue with the lessons learned. Yap, there used to be a video on this slide, however, it didn't work as expected, so we'll start with the next slide. This video will be included in the presentation that will be sent to you. Great. This video is definitely worth watching. Just a quick introduction. My name is Jop. Hink was in contact with our IT guy, Martin, last week, which caused a bit of confusion, I think. But that doesn't matter. As mentioned earlier in the introduction, the brand awareness of Corbion isn't that high, but we're working very hard on it. When we introduce ourselves, we introduce ourselves from the parent company we originated from, which is CSM, a company with higher brand awareness. CSM owned a large portfolio consisting of all kinds of companies. In 2012 or 13, CSM was sold to a private equity investor. And to say it bluntly, two parts of the company remained. Purac, a producer of lactic acid, and Caravan Ingredients, a producer of food ingredients. In 2013, those two companies were merged into Corbion. So our company is quite remarkable. It has existed for only seven years now, but some people have worked here for over 40 years. On to the next slide. How are we currently organized? We have three different business units. On the left side is CFS, Sustainable Food Solutions. The main focus of this branch is bakery ingredients and products that keep food like bread and meat fresh for a longer period of time in a natural way. Our core product is lactic acid, which we use to produce those food ingredients. In the middle is the branch LAS, lactic acid and specialties. This is the branch where lactic acid is used for a different purpose, in medical science as well as for the production of semiconductors. Lastly, we've put a lot of effort into creating polymers out of lactic acid that can be used to create biodegradable plastic. This business unit has also set up a joint venture with a French company with which we are running a bioplastic factory in Thailand. And recently, we also announced that we are going to build an even larger bioplastic factory in France. On the right side is Incubator, a younger branch within Corbion. The focus of this business unit is the production and sale of algae and omega-3 fatty acids. Our company has manufacturing facilities all over the world. On this slide, the number of employees is still 2,000. But meanwhile, we have 2,300 employees and a turnover of 1 billion. We have a lot of factories in Thailand, Brazil, Europe, and 10 sites in the US. The headquarters is located in Amsterdam, and we are listed on the AMX. On to the next slide. Yes, the CUBE project. Similar to other organizations, we tend to give each project a name, mostly an abbreviation. In this case, we had to think about it for a while. CUBE stands for Corbion United by ERP. Some people joke about turning it into CUBE United by Excel, but we try to suppress that. In the formation of Corbion, various business processes were taken into account. We had to move away from CRM and become independent and there was less support from the big parent. Eventually, we decided to switch to a new ERP platform. This was decided since Corbion's main goal is growth, 
and we think that a new ERP platform contributes largely to achieving this goal. In the middle of the slide, you can see a few other reasons, such as transparency, productivity, and solidarity. And at the bottom of the slide is actually a negative reason for the switch to a new ERP platform. The old platform is really outdated, so we need a new one. Next slide. We started with the CUBE project at the end of 2017. We set up a project group with internal project leaders, or workstream leads, as we call them, in five work streams. Demand to supply, which is everything that has to do with the production process. Maintain to settle, that's maintenance. Order to cash is service. Source to pay is the purchase department. And finance to manage needs no explanation. As I mentioned earlier, the project started at the end of 2017. We added a system integrator to it, Capgemini, and the project now consists of a total of 50 people. There are two involved work streams not included in this slide that I'd like to mention. Integration management, a separation stream to connect everything, and the stream I'm leading myself, organizational change management, OCM, which has been part of the CUBE program from the start. This is our standard slide, used in every presentation. Some people at Corbion might already know it by heart, but I'd like to go through it anyway. What are the guiding principles of the CUBE program? Standardization, which doesn't mean that the current system is pre-format, but it does give more freedom to design. We will make the transfer from SAP to S4 HANA, a great program, but it requires standardization, and that is something we have to get used to. Best practice. Sometimes we think we are more unique than the rest of the world, and sometimes we are, but not always. So let's first see what other companies have implemented. Change management. Introducing a new ERP platform with S4 HANA requires changing the way we work. And those new ways of working aren't that straightforward. And it's a business-led project, not an IT software project. I'm not sure if there's another slide. Yes, I think this is the last one. We use a phased, region-bound implementation to minimize the risk with the organization. It has been a year since we went live in Asia, in Thailand and Singapore. At the moment, we're working really hard on the upcoming Go Live in Europe, in Spain, the Netherlands, as well as parts of Poland and France. This is planned for early March next year. After that, there will be a rollout at four locations in Brazil. And finally, we will have a rollout in the U.S. at 10 locations coast to coast, which is quite a challenge. This is the high-level process before we go live. We rolled out a global template here, or at least we designed it. We pick up that global template and start working on the first row, the localizations. The techies on the team take care of that. The second row contains the go-live preparation, this is the part I'm in charge of. This is how we approach this. There is a collaboration between the CUBE team and the local team in the country of the Go Live. Actually, I always tell the local manager, I don't care who is on the team. That's your decision. It also contributes to the support to say that it's the own Go Live of the specific location. We create a plan of action. What needs to be done before the Go Live? We will practice that and eventually we will go live. And a major part of this is the training. What we do is we provide training for the so-called key users. Those key users will play a role in the further rollout of the program. And about two to three weeks before the go live, it's time for the end user training. Part of the further go live presentation is a change impact analysis, willingness to change and adaptability to change. We use surveys to look at the major changes for each department associated with the introduction of the new SAP platform. And a lot of communication. I've learned that there is no such thing as too much communication. In short, it's an extensive project. This picture shows the process about six months before the go live. During these months, we start working on it for a specific location. 
I can talk for hours about this, but I think that's it. Okay, I'll take it from here. User adoption. When assessing the situation regarding this project, Corbion did not take change management and user adoption into account, especially in the past. And because this project was really critical, the decision was to pay a lot of attention to these aspects in order to make the project a success. Because in the end, if people embrace it, it becomes a success. The moment people dig their heels in, you will have a real challenge. So user adoption is really important. The technology might be perfect, but people have to accept it. When you look at user adoption in practice, you see that in many critical migration processes like this, the importance of change management is not emphasized enough. If you look at the percentages, you'll see that 32% don't focus on change management at all. This poses an enormous risk. Maybe that's because a lot of companies don't know what to do about change management. Will it be enough to teach the key users some basics at the workplace? Or do we need to do more? And when dealing with the shift towards standardization, you already know there will be some resistance. So, change management really is important, even though it might be difficult sometimes. If you don't deal with it, it could be a risk factor causing a setback when going live with a lot of consequences regarding order processing, requirements, etc. And you don't want that. Do any of the participants want to comment on this? How do you see the urgency of user adoption? Do you think it's really easy to do? Or is user adoption at S4 HANA indeed a serious issue? I'm looking forward to your comments on this. You can submit them in the questions and remarks section. Okay, how did it go? In the first place, at the end of 2018, Corbion started the selection process to find a partner. An RFP was issued and a number of parties were invited to participate. Eventually, TTS was chosen as a partner. A quick word about TTS. TTS is an international learning company. We were represented by around 350 employees in Europe. TTS was founded in Germany and is active in most Western European countries and America. Our main focus is indeed on change-related processes in the IT sector. One of the main priorities for Corbion when making this decision was to find a partner who was not only able to do the trick for S4 HANA, but also for the entire IT landscape. Because, of course, this project is important in the short term, but other things are yet to come and they need to be supported in the same uniform way, so that the support is easy to use for the employees. Of course, we at TTS are really happy about this. The heart of the selection process was to map the approach and the corresponding tooling. Well, when it comes to tooling, TTS has a platform, TT Performance Suite. As the name already indicates, it's about performance. This platform allows you to easily create instruction material in various formats and make it accessible to the employees. So, that was the first thing to set up. Then we did a really intensive training need analysis regarding the main processes. I will show you some examples later. Because we really need to understand which questions are critical right now and what are the most important changes that the employees need to be informed about and trained for? So, we worked really hard on this together with the workstream leads in order to get an overall view of the necessary knowledge. Then, 
We started developing, and as is typical for every IT project, there's always a considerable capacity problem. Can you free up the capacity to actually create that content, that instructional material? Corbion decided to outsource this task and to develop a co-creation. Because without the specialists, without the subject matter experts, we won't succeed. They have the knowledge about the processes, the people, and the system itself. We know everything about learning and how to make it tangible. We used different forms of instruction. E-learnings, mainly for the introduction and explanation of processes, simulations, and step-by-step text-sensitive instructions that match the screen on which employees are working, as well as their roles. So these instructions are provided in line with the application and the role of the employee. The e-learnings are primarily useful in advance, while the short simulation training and step-by-step -step instructions are effective in practice. The rollout has already been announced internationally in various waves. We are now finalizing the preparations for wave two, and then we will hand it over to Corbion, because we think that ownership of such a solution is really important. This ownership should be in the hands of the client instead of the supplier in order to get optimal boarding later on in the system. It isn't a one-time solution for a go-live, but should in fact be a sustainable solution to support the employees. I'm not sure if any questions or comments have already been submitted. Yes, we did receive some questions. We can go back to them later. Or do you prefer to answer them now? One of them is, how does Corbion make sure that there are and will be enough key users? Part of it was already answered during Jop's part. Just let me know whether you want to answer this question now. I think it's better to answer this question at the end because that's when we'll go into the lessons learned and I think this question is in line with that part. Great, let's move on. So, at TTS, we use a structured way to develop a learning and support solution. And as I already mentioned during the analysis part, conception means how are we going to do it? How are we going to implement it? Which formats are we going to use? We'll develop that, and then it's time for the creation of the simulations. It might be interesting to know that for most of our clients, the simulations and guides have been developed by the subject matter experts themselves, since creating the content is basically a one-time best practice, and you've created your material automatically. But of course, this requires skills and always takes some extra time. However, the production process has been made as simple as possible. The next step is providing the learning material to the users, which could be done through a learning management system if the client is using one. At Corbion, the material will soon be available in success factors as well as in the form of context-sensitive assistance within the application. On the S4 HANA screens, context-sensitive assistance is available as we will see later on. So. Through this context-sensitive assistance, we basically have integrated user support available in the work process. This is a picture of some sheets we use during the training need analysis. And you can see that we have subdivided the tasks for each process and looked at what types of material we need for each of them. Then. We linked possible priorities to this, as well as the various roles within the organization, in order to make it available in a context-sensitive way later on in line with the role of the employee. As you can imagine, the same screen can be interpreted in a different way by two employees with different roles. So we created the high-end e-learning for the basic principles, processes, and concepts. For the more specific processes, we created those simulations without all the bells and whistles. These are easy to make and maintain. And lastly, for the real operating part, or the clicks, so to speak, on the various screens we created the guides, the step-by-step -step instructions. 
What does that look like? We made sure that everything looks good in Corbion's corporate identity interface. And this is how it was received. We will elaborate on how the material was received later on. Okay, there we are. I will leave the presentation for now. I will show you the practical support part since everybody knows what an e-learning looks like. I will open the e-learning later, but the practical support is the most important one for now. I had recorded a video, which will be added to the presentation later. I can't show you the video right now, so I will give you a live presentation. I don't have S4 HANA, but I do have success factors since I am a success factors user myself. Okay, there we are. I will leave the presentation for now. I will show you the practical support part since everybody knows what an e-learning looks like. I will open the e-learning later, but the practical support is the most important one for now. I had recorded a video, which will be added to the presentation later. I can't show you the video right now, so I will give you a live presentation. I don't have S4 HANA, but I do have success factors since I am a success factors user myself. You can see my screen. Right now I am in PowerPoint and in the lower right corner you can see an orange. This orange is the symbol of the quick access. The apple was already taken. When I click on the orange, it detects that I am working in PowerPoint. And if I jump to Teams now, it will immediately see that I'm in Teams. I'm currently in success factors. I will sign out and sign in again. Right now, I'm on the main screen of success factors and I'm activating the quick access. The quick access will immediately notice this main screen. Over here, you can see success factors and something behind it. I have a lot of information, but let's assume I have to post a new job, a new vacancy. This should be done in recruiting. I will go to recruiting now. And enter that module. and it will detect that I am in the process of job requisitions. On the side of the screen, it shows the available support. So, how to create a new job requisition is a step-by-step -step instruction. The screen is divided into different parts. There's also a section with more detailed information. But I'm working in practice now, so maybe the step-by-step -step instructions will be sufficient. I want to continue my work as soon as possible but those detailed instructions are available in case you would like to learn more. I also have access to a short simulation, the e-learning that I just mentioned. I can also access the process directly or get in touch with the functional manager or an expert. So there are different categories I can create myself, and this is the way I provide very specific support while I'm working. I will show you what that looks like as well. For example, after selecting the step-by-step -step instruction, the various steps are listed on the right-hand side of the screen. I already clicked on the home button. I am already in recruiting and I'm at step three now. So I don't have to work through all the steps. In some tools similar to this one, you have to go through all the steps of the process. This isn't the case for our tool. You can pick the step that you need help with yourself. Now, for example, I have to select Create New. Where is that? I can't find it. There's so much information on the screen. When I hover over the image, it shows me exactly where to find it. And the advantage is that there is no connection between the quick access and the application itself. So if something were to change in the application, the quick access wouldn't be affected. The maintenance is quite easy as well. I can just change one of the steps without having to do all the rest again. 
Also, the creative process is really user-friendly. Going through all the needed steps in the author environment will create the step-by-step -step instruction automatically. The same goes for the documentation, e-learnings, and simulation. So, this makes it easy to create the material, but also to maintain it, because changing something in one place will automatically update the rest of my material. Okay, so this is the step-by-step -step instruction. There is also some more detailed information. Over here, I also have direct access to a manual. I don't have to search for anything since it's synchronized with this screen. I opened it really quickly. Basically, I can provide all the instructions in a context-sensitive way. So, it's not always about creating new material. If there already is some material, I can link it to a specific context. The same instruction is also available as a short e-learning. Let's assume I'm doing it for the first time and I'm a bit insecure and don't want to work on the real screen. There is a possibility to do the actual clicking over here. If I click something wrong, it will tell me, no, you have to click here. And I can work through the whole process this way. I'm not going to do that right now, but just to give you an idea. You can design it however you like. In case I need support from an expert, all I need to do is click on this link and it will create an email instantly. But you could also start a Teams call or use Skype or whatever kind of communication tool you have. This way, we try to support the employees in the context of their work. At Corbion, most of the items are guides that are easy to create and maintain. The e-learnings are used for the more critical things, where we knew it was important for the employees to go through those before they go into the live application. Okay, I will go back to the presentation. Over here, a reminder is displayed in case of any changes within the application. This is something we haven't installed at Corbion since they are not working with Windows 10 yet. After the upgrade to Windows 10, we will be able to make this live as well. So, in case of a small change, which isn't that unusual when working in a cloud environment, the employees can get an alert about the change and receive instructions on it. Okay. Now it's time to go on to the lessons learned. I think this is really important. Yep, over to you. Yes, I really wanted to share these two pictures with you. So, Hink showed us the quick access tool. These photos were taken in Thailand. This is our approach to the training. We start with key user training. Those users can start working with the training materials. Then, Two to three weeks before the go live, an end user training with a duration of one week follows. You should block at least one week, but the content and duration of the training will depend on your role. This is a prerequisite for getting access to SAP. If you want to drive a car, you will also need a driver's license. This is how I see it. You have to learn the basic principles first. That doesn't mean that people have to learn everything in just one week. That's impossible. And this was exactly the reason we opted for TTS. Our goal was to offer training material in a modern way, with e-learnings, so that people can have another look at it in their own time. We wanted to be able to offer a refresher training at a different time. This was new for Corbian. It may sound a bit weird, but training wasn't all that important, especially when it came to IT processes. At best, there were instructions somewhere on SharePoint, but you had to search for them. That was something we really wanted to change in order to enable the end users to quickly start working with the material. I've been working on this project for three years now, and I haven't come across any real resistance to change. What I have experienced is concern about change. People just want to keep doing their job well, and they have to give up a very familiar system they've been working with for a number of years and use something completely new, and they are concerned about it. They think, 
is this going well? Can I keep doing my job? Well, we were able to eliminate some of those concerns by providing the training materials. This was received well, but the end user training, the quick access, was what really caused the wow effect. It's fascinating to see people working on an SAP screen for the first time and getting stuck. Of course they get stuck. It's completely new. So it doesn't matter. So you press the help button, but instead of getting a 400-page manual you have to go through, the quick access tells you right on the screen what you're working on. Just like Hink showed us earlier. You're looking for help now. You are currently on this screen. These are your authorizations. So this could be the information you're looking for. This really helped us. So much so that the quick access, the orange, became a sort of mascot. During the go live, we saw the orange on banners and t-shirts. And namsam, which I think is Thai for orange, is a well-known word within our organization. And now, lessons learned. Hink, I think it was, or still is, especially nice about the collaboration with TTS, is that it really is a co-markership. Of course, we had some moments when we didn't completely agree with each other or didn't have the same priorities. But you have short and clear lines of communication, which makes working with them a pleasure. A lesson learned that I would like to give those who are still about to start this process. Hink just told us about the training need analysis. Be careful, don't bite off more than you can chew. In the beginning, we were really enthusiastic and a bit too ambitious. We wanted to include everything in the training. This led to a scope that was way too broad. The Workstream leads wanted a lot of things, but they weren't there because they had to take care of other things as well. This was something we had to adjust, but eventually we succeeded. If I had to do it again, I would rather start small and let it grow instead of what we did, which was start too big and adjust later. That's always less fun. The second thing I observed is that other departments within our organization, such as legal, my own HR department, and customer service, also got notice of this incredible system, and they wanted to get a free ride with us. And that's a good thing. It's something we want. However, we had a deadline for the end users in the SAP project, so I didn't win the popularity award. Every time I had to tell the departments, you can join, but not now, I have a tight deadline. I have to make sure the end users are trained, and only when that happens will we let other departments join as well. Well, I don't think we'll be able to postpone this until the US go live. Somewhere halfway through, I will probably have to open this door a bit. In any case, this shows how enthusiastic people in other departments at Corbion were about the system. As I said earlier, the co-makership with TTS and the flexibility of the TTS consultants has been unprecedented. I believe I even told them, it's okay to be a bit stricter on us. It's a bit of a Dutch thing to say, but I'll say it anyway. The investment in the training materials is substantial, but in this case, it really accelerated the end-user adoption in the first wave. And I can already see that because we already started training the key users in Europe, it's really paying off and it's a worthwhile investment. As I mentioned earlier, we really wanted to provide users with modern training material. We started with one week. And in Europe, approximately 500 end users need to be trained. So this will take up to three weeks, in which we will start with classroom training, and after that, people will start working on it themselves even after the go live. And the fun part of the training material is that you can monitor how people use it. For example, we noticed that one department in Asia spent a lot of time on that specific transaction for training material. This way, we were able to determine the parts we needed a refresher training for and bring together the employees from that department, whether it was the financial or the logistics department, and tell them, we're going to go through this again as a class works very well. So what are the next steps I'm working on right now? Hink already mentioned it. It's something I really like about TTS. At a certain point, they will hand the project over and we will have to stand on our own two feet. Also, regarding the development of the material, this is still something I'm looking at. How to work this out and where to position it. Should it be within the IT department, 
within the HR department or maybe as a separate training department. We're currently having discussions about that. How do we organize the governance? Everybody wants to sit in the front row, but that isn't possible because then we will miss the central approach. We've started implementing an LMS system in our success factors. I would like to make a connection with that. And as said before, the further connection with other departments within Corbion. And one of them has already started. Right, Hink? Yes. Let's just say that we weren't able to keep the door shut over there. But I'm pretty sure that the legal department and probably HR as well can't wait to start with presenting training material with Corbion in a nice and modern way.